In May 2008, a film crew were shadowing police for a reality show called Motorway Cops. Instead, what they captured was something much more bizarre and a hell of a lot more interesting. They captured footage of two women, Sabina and Ursula Erickson, dashing into oncoming traffic. They're going to steal your organs, screamed Sabina Erickson before running towards oncoming traffic on the M6 motorway in England, having already been hit head on by a car. Her twin sister, Ursula, legs crushed by a truck, was screaming at paramedics on the side of the road. These Swedish twins had reunited only hours earlier before they decided it was a good idea to run into oncoming traffic. It's a very bizarre case and still quite a mystery. Let's take a look at what led to and happened after in this very curious case. The twins Sabina and Ursula grew up together in Sweden. By the time they were 33, Ursula had moved to the US while Sabina was living in Ireland with her partner and two children. Neither of them had a history of mental health issues or any criminal convictions. Our story begins on Friday the 16th of May 2008. Ursula had travelled from her home in the USA to visit her twin sister. They left Sabina's home in County Cork and travelled to Liverpool by ferry, arriving, it's believed, at 8.30 a.m. on Saturday the 17th of May. They both went to visit a police station in the UK where Sabina reported concerns about the safety of her children back in Ireland. Why she didn't go to the police back in Ireland? I have no idea. The police, however, they made contact with officers back in Dublin and promised to follow up on the complaint. At 11.30 a.m., Sabina and Ursula boarded a National Express coach to London. While on the bus, they suddenly disembarked at Keel Services, a motorway service station. It wasn't a scheduled stop. Now, the police reported that they got off the bus because they were feeling unwell. However, the driver said they were behaving very erratically. He noticed the twins clinging to their bags tightly and did not let them reboard because they refused to let him search their bags for illegal items. The manager of the service station was informed and also feeling suspicious, she called the police. Convinced that they posed no threat of harm to themselves or to anyone else, the police let them go when they arrived. Mistake. The twins then departed the service station on foot and began to walk down the central lane of the M6 before attempting to cross it, causing chaos to the traffic and, you know, being hit by cars. The twins' older brother later claimed in a Swedish newspaper that they were being pursued by maniacs. Who the maniacs are? You have no idea. On the HA, the vehicle. You say one of them ran from the highways officers, and that's how the collision occurred. So they were trying to get back across the carriageway and they've been struck, is that right? Well, they were walking up playing three as far as I'm aware. It is on CCTV. That's received. Highway agency officers responded to the incident. They stopped the sisters. The situation appeared calm. The sisters stood smoking and chatted. You know, as if just walking down the motorway, highway is like the most normal thing in the world, as you do. Then, as arriving police were being informed about the situation, Ursula suddenly ran onto the road. Is she the one that speaks English? She ran straight into the side of an oncoming truck. Seconds later, Sabina jumped onto the road, smashing into the bonnet of a Volkswagen Polo. Ursula's legs were crushed. Sabina was unconscious for approximately 15 minutes. Somehow, they both survived. An air ambulance was called, and Sabina started to come around, and then decided to start clawing and spitting at the police who were trying to save her life. She screamed, I recognize you, you're not real. 
She also made a claim about the theft of her organs. Then, somehow, she rose to her feet and started screaming for the help of the police, even though they were, you know, surrounding her. Sabina began to ask, Why do you kill me? Then she punched a police officer in the face and bolted. With nowhere to go, she squared up to the police officers, who eventually put her into handcuffs. Given the similarities between the behaviour of the two sisters, a suicide pact or drug use was quickly suspected. Searching the debris of the incident, the police found a number of broken mobile phones. Why had they so many? Who the F knows? Why do I always need my tinfoil hat? Ursula was taken to hospital by air ambulance. Sabina was taken to hospital, where, despite her ordeal and an apparent lack of concern over her sister's injuries, she soon became calmer and controlled, and was released from hospital five hours later. In police custody then, she remained relaxed, and while being processed, she told an officer, we say in Sweden that an accident rarely comes alone. Usually at least one more follows, maybe two. They are so dirty and smelly and they found only one socks for me. Yeah. So try not to breathe then. <laughs> we say always in Sweden that an accident rarely comes alone. Usually at least one more follows. And that's what they call in the biz, foreshadowing. Foreshadowing with the subtlety of a hammer, but foreshadowing nonetheless. It gets worse. The following day, Sabina was released from court. She pled guilty to the charges of punching a police officer and trespassing on the motorway, and was sentenced to one day in custody. Wow, one whole day. Having spent a full night in the police station, she was deemed to have served her sentence. Oddly enough, they didn't think to maybe get a psychologist in to see if she was a crazy person, they just let her go. Mistake number two. Leaving court, Sabina began to wander the streets of Stoke-on-Trent, trying to locate her sister in the hospital, and carrying her possessions in a clear plastic bag given to her by police. At 7pm, two local men spotted Sabina. One of the men was 54-year-old Glenn Hollinshead, a former RAF airman, and the other was his friend, Peter Malloy. Sabina appeared friendly and stroked the dog as the three struck up a conversation. Although friendly, Sabina appeared behaving nervously, which worried Malloy. Sabina then asked the two men for directions to any nearby bed and breakfasts or hotels. Glenn suggested they go back to his house nearby. Sabina was nervy but agreed. Once there, she couldn't stop peering out the window. She offered the two men a cigarette before snatching them out of their mouths before they could light them, claiming they might be poisoned. Just before midnight, Peter Malloy left. Sabina stayed the night. The following day, at around 7.40pm, Glenn made some food, then left the house to ask a neighbour for tea bags, and then went back inside. Under a minute later, he staggered outside, bleeding, telling his neighbour, she stabbed me. His last words before he died, allegedly, were, look after my dog for me. As the neighbour dialed 999, Sabina fled. It was later said that at this point, she began to hit herself with a hammer. A passing motorist tried to restrain her and was hit by a roof tile Sabina had in her pocket. Oh yeah, just one of those roof tiles people carry around in their pockets. Eventually, she made it to a bridge, where she jumped 40 feet, breaking both her ankles and fracturing her skull. She was then taken to hospital. Sabina was arrested on suspicion of murder, while recovering at the University Hospital of North Staffordshire on the 9th of June. Still in a wheelchair, she was discharged on the 11th of September, charged and taken into custody the same day. Ursula was released the same month. She made it back to America after spending time in Sweden. 
I guess the twins weren't that close after all. Sabina left Ursula in the hospital, and then Ursula left Sabina in prison. Ursula was never charged with any crime. On the 2nd of September, Sabina pled guilty to manslaughter with diminished responsibility. There was no explanation as to why she acted the way she did, why she killed Glenn, or anything really. Every question put to her was greeted with the reply of no comment. The prosecution and defense both claimed that Sabina was insane at the time of killing, though not at the time of the trial. The defense claimed that Sabina was a secondary sufferer of folie de, a madness of two, essentially when you buy into another person's hallucination, going on to claim that she had transmitted insanity from her twin Ursula. Yeah, Ursula's to blame, the one who didn't kill anyone. The prosecution accepted this. Sabina received five years to be served at Bronzefield Women's Prison. It was an insane situation that went much further than it ever should have, and it ended with an innocent man losing his life. Theories abound as to what happened. Drug use, uh, were they sharing the same psychosis, MK Ultra, the psychosis theory obviously is the most popular, but why did it start? When did it start? Did it start back in Ireland when Ursula came from America? Why were they going to the UK? Were her children ever really in any danger? Why did she make the complaint against presumably her husband? It's cuckoo. It's completely cuckoo. Interesting case. If you would like to read more about it, links below to more theories. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Mike out.